Well, hello. Good afternoon. How are you doing? You all right? I hope everybody's uh, fitting well on this lovely uh, Tuesday afternoon. It's Tuesday. I know what day it is. That's the first. Yes, welcome along to the channel. Um, settle in, enjoy, get yourself brewed, do whatever it is you want to do. Because today, I'm going to be doing, get this, beef cheeks and rice pudding on the Camado. Come and join me. Let's see how we get on. Like I said, welcome to the channel. I need to get a start on this because I've got to get the Camado up to temperature and I'm going to be using lump wood today, which uh, it's, uh, what is it? It's Big K, best grade uh, restaurant charcoal. And we'll stick a goodly chunk in. That'll do. It's going to be burning a while. These really are lovely sticks of coals. Lovely. Right. So I haven't got the, uh, the chart wall sticks in, now I need to get some fire lighters in and get it going. And since I'm going to be doing these slow, I'm going to use four. Four and slow? Anyway, whatever. There you go. Couple in the middle, or three in the middle, that'll do. Kind of scattered about a bit. And one slightly offset to the side. And then the good old flamethrower. I hope I beg you to burn. That's it. Now then, we have flamage. So I'll just stick some sticks over the top of it. Like that. It's a bit like lighting a campfire, isn't it? There we go. That's lovely. Let that get on with it. And I'll come back to you when we're actually going to get a start on cooking. Back in a bit. Um, I've brought the ingredients out and this is what we're going to be looking at. There is, uh, this has come from Campbell's and this is an ox cheek, right? In its plastic packaging, as you can no doubt see. Um, there'll be a tiny little wee bit of trimming to do on that. And there's two portions there. One for she who must be obeyed and one for me which is, yeah, quite important. Um, gonna do them in a roasting pan. They're not gonna just be put on the grate and left to their own devices. I'll do them in a roasting pan because they're gonna be in there for a long time. I want the juices to go off onto the spuds and the carrots that are gonna be in there too. So, uh, while, uh, while we wait for the Camaro to come to temperature, let me welcome you along to the channel and uh, hope that you are all in the peak of fitness or as well as you possibly can be given the current uncertainties. Uh, let's see where we go, shall we? Back in a bit. Right, so while we wait for the Camaro to come up to temperature, I'll do a little bit of prep on these veggies and then they're ready to go. So it's very, very simple really. Nothing particularly hard to do, just top tail the carrots. I do like carrots. You can see in the dark, you know. Chuck them in. Chop the carrots, hide them in. That's them. And a few spuds. Not going to half them, just going to leave them as they are. I'm not going to put too many in either. So that's them, carrots and spuds in. And let's have a look at the beef cheeks. Now, I need to check that you can see them. Yes, you can. Right, so, quick slice along, as you do. And look at that. Look at that. Now, the thing about beef cheeks is they are full of collagen and fat, connective tissue, all kinds of stuff that's going to render down and make for some really nice eating. That's the idea at any rate. It should render down, soften off and make things really nice. And I'm going to leave this bit of fat 
Am I going to? No, I'm not. I'm going to chop it off. Because all it is, is a bit of fat and it's not going to contribute much other than to sit alongside the uh, the meat in the in the, the pan and uh, moisten things up a little bit so there we go the beef of the the cheek of the it's not actually its cheek it's its neck or from you know the jaw bit down to the neck that's where it's from um, and that's uh, that's pretty well and good is that so what I need to do now is get some seasoning on it you know me in seasoning salt you can't have too much salt well you can but we're not gonna so a good sprinkle I want this nice good sprinkling of salt both sides lush that'll do pick the rest up stick it in there on top of the tatey that's it that's ready to go as soon as the Camado is up to temperature so I'll come back to you when we're ready to shove that in and then I'll show you what we're going to do with the rice pudding because the two are going to cook at the same time back in a bit right well the coals are lit they're there uh, my beef is ready and you'll have seen since last I saw you I've stuck a little bit of ghee on there and I've shoved the meter probe in and the meter is already set up and running uh, that's going Wi-Fi so we'll be able to use meter to see exactly what's going on um, the Camado is coming up coming up uh, to 100 degrees so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the grate in uh, ready to take what I'm going to do and it's going to be stacked the beef will be on the bottom the rice pudding will be on the top so we'll do that as you'll be able to see we've got the, the ceramics in to stop because I don't want direct heat I just want indirect heat and the meat is going to go on there so we'll just uh, drop that down and wait for it to get back up to temperature and when it comes back up to temperature then we can uh, get the meat in and get that started and then I can make a start on the rice pudding back with you in a bit hello we're back um, the Camado is coming up to temperature I've loaded the uh, the grill set up in there um, and we're at what 85 degrees so we're getting there it's climbing up quite quickly which is you know that's fine I don't have a problem with that in any way shape or form in fact I quite like the fact that it's coming up relatively quickly but I do need just to close this vent down a little bit because I don't want it to be going too fast as it were um, so the vent is now closed to where is it well you can see where it is and uh, temperature is now at 87 degrees so it's slowing down a little which is exactly the way we want it and uh, we should hopefully be able to get the meat in fairly shortly and then it'll uh, it'll do the job because I really want to get started on the rice pudding because I love rice pudding rice pudding's marvellous while we wait can I can I thank everybody as well uh, for comments that have been made not only uh, on these YouTube videos in the comments section which is down below and it would be marvellous if you would put a comment in there a little bit of advice is always a good thing any comments on anything that we're doing um, that's always going to be good uh, but also on Facebook and Twitter and other places it's uh, thank you for that I do appreciate it um, if you, if you are new to the channel please do consider subscribing leave a comment down below give us a thumbs up or give us a thumbs down either one don't care which but if you do give us a thumbs down please do put a comment down there and tell me why you've given me a dislike a thumbs down that kind of thing and not just because I'm ugly either lovely right where are we 94 degrees that's hot enough for me so I'm going to put the good old pan on uh, one of the habits I've gotten into because um, I'm a devout coward don't you know is wearing fireproof or at least heat proof gloves whenever I'm messing about in the Camado itself on the basis that it just makes more sense to sort of do and you never quite know what you're going to be handling so gloves are on lid is up smoky smoky 
that goes in there and then I'll put the standard riser on that fits there that's lovely right down we go and yes I know the meter was sticking up a little that's fine I can live with that so that's now getting itself a start that's good uh, give me a couple of seconds to reset and I'll come back here and show you what we're doing about the rice pudding back in a tick right so rice pudding time this is going to be a fairly straightforward piece of work it shouldn't be hard to do we start I've got the um, I've got the Dutch oven on the gas ring so let's just get some heat into that and it can go at full chuck at this point and then I need to bring down my ingredients which I have stored earlier here so first things first first things first got a chunk of butter chunk of butter in that goes in and then four ounces of sugar ordinary caster sugar that's all you need and then five ounces of short grained arborio rice pudding rice short grained rice is what it is that goes in and then two pints of full cream full fat none of your skinny stuff milk in and the second one in lush and finally a little bit of vanilla bean paste I'll put that there and then you can see what it is might need to zoom in on it and just a teaspoon that's it it's not to make a taste of vanilla particularly it's just to give it a little bit of extra zing a little bit of something a little bit of je ne sais quoi now all I'm going to do is bring this up to the boil and once it's up to the boil the heat proof gloves are going back on and then it's going in the Camado and there the beef and the rice pudding will sit for between three and four hours and hopefully at the end of it we'll have lovely beef taties and carrots and a nice rice pudding and then probably an early night because we're stuffed the good bit about this recipe one of the really good bits about this recipe aside from the fact that beef cheek is absolutely marvelous and cheap um, is that whoever's doing the barbecuing needs to be sat beside the Camado for the full period of the cook drinking a beverage of cool variety uh, which may or may not include the likes of beer or gin and tonic I should point out by the way that my good lady wife has repaired to an alternative area because I think she was starting to get a little bit hungry and it was uh, it was wetting our whistle a little bit too much oh dear how sad well, this is starting to melt down nicely so give it a while get everything dissolved now during the course of the cooking of this for the first hour or so you do need to go in every so often and give it a stir I'll not bother filming that um, you've seen how to stir it you know how to stir a rice pudding but you need to stir it two or three times during the first hour and then leave it to form that skin that lovely caramelized skin that you get on top he said realizing he shouldn't have said that at that point because that means I'm not going to get one and if I don't get a caramelized skin there's a, a young lady sitting over there who's just looked at me as much as to say if there's no skin you're in trouble right this is starting to come up to the boil now it's nice to see the little black flecks of vanilla seeds floating around in it 
Now you might be thinking, Dave, this is a really weird time to do rice pudding. We're, we're going into summer. You live down south, don't you? Up here in the frozen, frozen wastes of northeast England, uh, we're probably, oh, I don't know, a good six months behind you lot down south. So although the sun is shining, and although I've got the sides of the gazebo up, so there's fresh air blowing through, not too fast, thankfully. Um, it doesn't mean it's going to be warm tonight when this will be ready. In fact, it'll probably be chilly again overnight because there's forecast to not be a cloud in the sky. And that usually means it's freezing up here. Such is life. You can see the steam coming off this now, I hope. Well, I can because the sun's shining through it. Lovely. I think that will just about do it. But I will let it get to a bubbling boil before we go any further. Or at least a bubbling simmer. Now I don't know about you, but I like my rice pudding, what, what I used to call lumpy as a kid. That is to say, not like a Heinz one out of a tin where there's lots of liquid, but where you can just about slice it always liked it like that so I'm keeping my fingers crossed because this is a recipe my grandma used to use my grandma was four foot eleven of spit and fury she made a crack and rice pudding <laughs> she's the only woman I've ever met had to get the steps out to be able to get a pan on the top shelf in the oven <laughs> she was literally she only came up to here on me <laughs> oh, I do miss her I do miss her right we're up to the rolling boil now so I should put the lid on and then get the gloves on and bung it in the Camado. So let's see what happens with that, shall we? Da da da. Da 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 da. Right. Off there. Onto there, being careful not to hit the meter. And that's it. That's it. We're uh, we're about done with that. It's gone onto the Camado. Um, it can sit there and fester away. I'll give it a couple of stirs and then I'll come back to you when it's nearly time to take it all out and show you how it's all come out. Yes. All good, see you in a bit. Do you know something, it's just as well I've got a wife really, it really is, seriously. I have discovered that, how do I put, sometimes my brain works faster than my mouth and my mouth struggles to catch up. It's called a stammer or stutter or whatever, but it's apparently it only, uh, it only affects really, really intelligent people. <laughs> anyway, bottom line on it is, I used the word castor sugar when I should have said granulated sugar. Now, sugar is sugar as far as I'm concerned, unless it's a different colour or it comes in cubes or lumps or stuff. But anyway, uh, it's granulated sugar that we've used, not castor sugar, and it's granulated sugar you should use, not castor sugar, because castor sugar apparently is meant for cakes. You'll never ever find me arguing about cakes being made. Ever. I love cake. Can you tell? Anyway, right, just so you know that, that's all good. Um, the cook's on its way. Let's see how it all turns out. I'll see you in a bit. The meat, so what I'll do, I think, sensibly, is pull out this one cheek and put that on the plate and I shall put a spud and a carrot let's see where we get with this whole rib rib, no it's not the cheek so I'm just going to pull it off and we can see straight away that beautiful gelatinous stuff that's down there and that's just going to pull as it does 
Let's give it a try to see how it eats. And straight away, it's milky in the mouth. That's lovely. Um, the cookage, the last bit of cookage in that uh, that broth, which was, by the way, you know, I said before about the no stock pots. It's a beef stock pot. It's an onion gravy stock pot. It's about three tablespoons of ketchup manis um, and some sweet chilli sauce with a dribble of maple syrup going in. Around about a tablespoon of maple syrup going in because beef cheek can take sweet um, and it just brings out the flavour. And the flavour of this beef, beef cheek is absolutely amazing, it's beautiful. My wife is sitting there salivating, waiting for her tea. Hmm. So, I'll do one other thing before I go up, and that will be on that camera over there, the one that's looking. Can you see? You know, like I said, you know, I said I like my rice pudding, what I used to call lumpy. Watch. And you can see that it's not quite the ambrosia type of creamed rice pudding. It is a little more solid than that. If I put it over there. There you go, you can see it. Let's just have a quick taste of that. Oh. <laughs> That's going to be marvellous. So there you go, five hours start to finish. Dead easy to do, nothing hard about it, and you end up with beautiful, 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 soft, gelatinous and gorgeous meat. It tastes nice, the rice pudding as well. If you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and try it yourself. If you haven't, give it a thumbs down and tell me why. Subscribe if you want to, but I'll see you on the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Stay home. Bye bye. Thank you.